This week, on days of our Pirates, like every other offseason for the Pittsburgh Pirates, the Pirates made many moves yesterday that gave us some new players, but also got rid of some fan favorites. First is Jacob Stallings, who was traded to the Marlins for right-handed pitcher Zach Thompson, outfielder Connor Scott, and right-handed pitcher Kyle Nicholas. And although Stallings is gone, and I know he's a very capable starter, and he's very serviceable, and honestly, in my opinion, he was the second most consistent player on the team behind Brian Reynolds. I feel that this isn't necessarily a bad thing because we have Henry Davis and he could be a capable starter somewhere else. It isn't fair to him and it isn't fair to us as well. Second off is Steven Brault. He has been um, lifted from his duties and we have signed Jose Quintana, the former Los Angeles Angels pitcher, to replace him. As well, Colin Moran, he's also gone. He was involved in the Garrett Cole trade. He's gone, and he had to hold down the fort for a little bit. But we did all of this so we could sign Yoshi. Yes, that's right. Yoshi is coming back as an outfielder. He had a very, very impressive stance with the Pirates whenever he came in about three quarters of the way through the season. And this is Zach Thompson. He was a Pirates fan when he was younger, and he posted this picture, which I think is just very awesome of him. I'm very glad to see that he's going back to his... Hit, not going back, but going to his childhood team. And my thoughts on these trades, Steven Brault, he wasn't terrible, but he wasn't anything great. So seeing him go, I'm okay with that. I wish him well. I wish every single player went well, obviously. Uh, and with the Colin Moran release, um, he would have, every single year, he seemed to have a month where he goes off. And then other than that, he's just average. So I'm not too sad to see him go. He was involved in the Garrett Cole trade. Like I said, he was one of the pieces that the Pirates got. But at the end of the day, we have Key Brian Hayes, and we have all of these young prospects coming up. We need to give them room to start. So whenever we have a, someone like Moran, who is good enough to start on the team, and he's not he's not old in baseball terms, but he's not necessarily young either, it's just good to get rid of him to, so we can have an extra roster spot. And then when it comes down to the Stephen Brault trade, like I said, I don't have any issues with that. I don't have any issues with any of these, but what hurts the most is Jacob Stallings. And the reason being is we drafted Henry Davis with the first overall pick in the 2021 draft because we went 19-41 and 41 in the shortened MLB season in 2020. We drafted him. He was a catcher from Louisville. And he's a very promising player. We've never seen him play for the Pirates, unlike O'Neal Cruz, who came in the last two games and already hit a home run, or Yoshi or keep Ryan Hayes, but he has the potential to be better than all of those players combined. And the fact that we have Stallings, who at the beginning of the year was a little bit shaky, and he was always kind of a placeholder until eventually he'd be gone, because we knew he'd be gone eventually. But the fact that especially towards the middle and end of the year, that he became a very solid starter, a very serviceable starter, and honestly, he became a starting quality catcher, and one that I think honestly is above league average when it comes to the catcher position. So it's sad to see him go, but at the end of the day, it's better for our organization that way we can play our first overall pick because, I mean, you have to do that, especially when they have the potential like Henry Davis does. And then when you factor in the fact that Stallings is a very capable starter and he was probably the second most consistent player on the team behind Brian Reynolds, it wouldn't be fair to him to have a part-time role when he could go to a team like, say, the Yankees, even though catcher isn't really a position you need for them, but I'm just using them as an example. You can go to a team like the Yankees and he can excel and he can contend for championships, and that's something that he's not going to be able to do with the Pirates for at least the next few years. And then you consider the fact that it would just be better for both parties for him to be released. So he's a solid player. It's sad to see him go, but I understand why. So Stephen Brault's on the move, Colin Moran's on the move, and Jacob Stallings is on the move. We get some new prospects, some new players, and give us some room for the next wave of Pittsburgh Pirates to come up. And if all goes well, and even if it goes even if some players don't pan out, as long as half of them pan out, this team will be a very solid young team on the rise, and that could begin this year, and I hope it begins this year, because this team, if all goes well, they could be contending for a World Series in five to six years, because they have a ton of recruits, excuse me, prospects, and all of them are looking very, very nice, but will they pan out in Major League Baseball? That we have yet to see. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you... Or do you agree with me on these trades? You know, you can add more to it if you feel there's stuff that I left out. But Days of Our Pirates is back. Second episode in a week. Maybe this isn't the end of the Pirates moves, but just like the Pirates trading players in the offseason, whether it's for good or bad reason, so are the Days of Our Pirates. And at the time I finished recording this episode, Chad Cool has been released and resigned from his duties from the Pittsburgh Pirates. He is no longer a Pirate. And personally, I have went to his first game in 2017 against the Dodgers on Sunday Night Baseball. 
and it was really something, but he's been very injury riddled the past few years, and he honestly, he's only been mediocre, so okay. A lot of fans, and a majority, not a majority, but a good amount of fans are going to say the Pirates are getting rid of everyone, and they are. But the reason why they're doing this is because, is because of the amount of prospects that they're getting for them and the prospects that they already have to give them room on the roster to truly develop. Now, I'm okay with all of these players being gone. It sucks to see people like Cool and Stallings go, especially Stallings, but I understand why and it's best for them and it's best for our team. But what I will say is that if the Pirates are cleaning up a majority of their house now, this is the last time it's going to have to be done. They've done this too many times. I am okay with them doing this now. Right, is obviously they're going to keep players like Keith Ryan Hayes, Brian Reynolds, players like that. But once this wave of getting rid of players right now is over, as long as they don't trade any young pieces that are developing or are already very good and they're not aging, then I'm completely okay with it. But th when they do this, they have to be all in. They have to be all in to the prospects that they have now. They're not going to be trading away, you know, people for a bag of Lay's potato chips anymore. They can't do that. If they're going to be doing this, which is what they're doing, then they're going to have to make it so this is the last time that they get rid of a good amount of players on their team and the last time that they clean up some of the house and make it so that all of these prospects, they're fully committed to them. They're not going to have to clean house again because these prospects are going to have the developing tools and the roster spots to develop. And therefore, we're not going to need to clean house. We're not going to clean house because we're going to pay our prospects and we're going to be a functional organization. And that is what's going to start today. If the, pir if the Pirates are doing this next year, the year after that, the year after that, then they're a failure. But if they're doing it right now, then it makes sense. And if they continue to do this into the following years, and we'll know that they're just a stupid organization and it's not going south. This, and it's going south. This is the last time that the Pirates can do something like this. This is the last time in a very long time that they should and have to do something like this. If I see them do this again, I will be mad. Their franchise will be a failure. If it's after this offseason, I have no idea what they are doing. So we have to make sure that this is the very last time the Pirates do this. I'm okay if I'm doing it, but if this, is the, this has to be the last time. They have to be fully committed to the process with the prospects that they have and are developing right now, and the ones that they just received to yesterday and today. That is the future of the team. That will be Those will be the players on the team 10 years from now, and those players are going to do great things for this organization. They're not going to be treated like this, and this is the last time a wave of players are going to be gone. And finally, the last time today, so are the days of our Pirates.